breakdown on film or that you've been able to see? No, uh, uh, and that's why they're number two in the country. And um, you know, typically when you when you're able to um, score the way they do and then defensively play the way they are, uh, that indicates you've got a lot of talent. Their players are well coached. Uh, they have a unique plan, and and they execute that plan well. <clears throat> and I think what's really going to be important, Robert, is just for us to control the things that we can control and knowing who we are and not try to do some things that are outside our comfort zone. Um, and so we'll continue to do that. And, and uh, I think it's important. Continual improvement is really important in any program. You know, we've made good improvement from our first game to our second game. It's going to be important that we make improvement uh, in our third game here. And uh, the, those things right there hanging on that, our hat on the things that, that we really believe in, I think are going to give us uh, 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 you know, our opportunity to win the game. Coach, when you're going on the road uh, to the number two team in the country, how important is it just to make sure that this team believes that they can pull an upset of this of this nature? Well, belief is certainly important, and, and we utilize that. <clears throat> we talked a lot about that uh, with our players. Um, going into a, an environment like uh, the University of Oregon, and I've not been there, but I understand uh, it's a tough environment, tough place to play. Poise and confidence certainly come into play. It does help the fact that uh, while we have a lot of inexperienced players at the systems that we're in, we have quite a few older mature players. You've got nine returning starters on defense, guys who play a lot of football. And while Colby is a first-year starter, he is a fifth-year senior. And so certainly maturity comes into play. And I think being able to cling and, and believe in the principles that we have as a program, I think, is really going to be important for us. We hear, Craig, we hear a lot about what Oregon's offense and the high power is, but what about the defense? What makes that defense uh, pretty good, and what do they particularly do well in, in your mind? Well, I, I, <clears throat> excuse me, I appreciate you bringing that up because I, I spent a lot of time looking at their defense because you hear so much about their offense. And, you know, when you look at their, their, their defense, I think it's important to start up front. And you see guys who are 6'7 and 280 that can really run. That's unique. You just don't see those kind of defensive linemen very often. And they, they operate out of a 3 4 front uh, the same way that Air Force deploys their guys out of a 3 4 front. However, they're, you know, it's an upgrade in talent. Um, I think they've got a very capable secondary. One of their corners, I believe, is an All American candidate. And he's got uh, great athleticism and speed. So you combine it with a, a scheme that 3-4, <clears throat> which we had a difficult time moving the ball with last week, and then along with that, uh, a secondary that can back it up. That poses big-time challenges. And that's another reason why I think they're currently number two in the country. Coach, there was a belief going into Michigan State that <coughs> Oregon had team, sometimes with physical football teams. They seem like a physical football team themselves. They just may not get that credit that, you know, it's all about the finesse and all that. Mm -hmm. Do you see them as being that, that, a physical type of football team that, that can, can play that way? Well, I think uh, I'm sure there was a point of emphasis by uh, their coaching staff to, to change beyond just being an athletic football team to becoming more physical. And you see the difference uh, between last year's team and this year's team, that they are more physical. And... Um, that's going to be a, another tough element to combat, and uh, we pride ourselves as being physical as well. Coach, how do you feel like uh, your linebackers have played where, you know, two weeks and two Mountain West Defensive Players of the Week, uh, and of course three seniors, and it seems like they've all sort of stepped up? Mm -hmm. You know, it's been uh, great to see and different guys out there making plays, and I thought Mark played well along with Jordan. And uh, this week will be another challenge. Um, I know the University of Wyoming in the past has been a a program that's given up a lot of points. I think currently we're giving up 12 and a half points a game, and that that's a change. Now, that, and we'll need to utilize that this week. <clears throat> uh, that you know, as Robert was talking about their offense, you know, garners a lot of national attention. Well, there's a reason why. And so, uh, Jordan's play was exceptional in the ball game. He came up with a big, big fourth down stop, caused a fumble, and he'll need to play well Saturday. When you mentioned you know had trouble especially running the ball against that Air Force 3-4. Was it just them coming from different angles? Did they throw some different wrinkles? And what kind of adjustments were you hoping to make mm -hmm. facing another 3-4 team with, granted, you know, a little bit more talent there? They, uh, they did, the Air Force did a nice job. Uh, you know, they changed some things, and <clears throat> it took us a while to get prepared for it. Now, there was, 
they, you know, they, they stacked, uh, as everybody says, the box. I mean, they had a lot of guys deployed at the line of scrimmage, which really helped us. We got behind them a couple times in the passing game, and so we utilized that. But, uh, you know, we'll need to be able to control the, the line of scrimmage to give ourselves a chance to win against uh, Oregon, and that's going to be a big, big challenge. And so Air Force did a good job. You're right. I mean, there was a couple new wrinkles that they had shown and some of the blocking patterns that we had didn't match up particularly well, and we'll need to make some adjustments here. From what you've seen, uh, what makes Marcus Mariota such a special player at that quarterback position for the Ducks? He's got certainly a live arm, and he's a com competitive guy. I don't know. I think he's lost three games since he's been a – I shouldn't say he, but it, since he's quarterback, they've only lost three games. You know, this guy's 6'4", and I saw him make five Michigan State tacklers who are very athletic miss. And so you have a guy that's six foot four, that's a competitive player, that's got a live arm, that's – makes a lot of people miss. That's a pretty good combination right there.